Three, two, fuck it, let's do it. Yep. All right, welcome back to Mostly Movies with Quinn Wright and Robert. Hello. Hi, guys. Um, most recently, I saw a live screen, a theater screening of Heat, the new definitive director's cut, and it was fucking awesome. I was supposed to go, but thanks to Google Maps, I got lost in downtown LA. Yeah, that sucks. Because this, the, Robbie, you've never seen Heat before. No, I haven't. We're probably going to watch it after the podcast, but it's fucking great. This new cut was really... I mean, Michael Mann cuts are, are very subtly different. They're, he has a different cut every new release, I think, for all of his movies. And it's, it's, this one is supposed to be the definitive director's cut, which is going to be like the fourth cut of Heat. The theatrical release was one cut. The DVD, the VHS release was another. The DVD, the Blu-ray. This is the, actually the fifth cut then. Um, it, was, it was fucking good. It was really loud in theaters, which was great. Um, I mean, Robbie, you do know about the shootout already. I think I've shown you parts of it already. Yeah, I've seen bits of the uh, shootout. Such a great shootout. This would have been a great opportunity to see it for the first time, too. Yeah. I was really pissed off. With a live Q&A. Yeah. How was that? That was pretty good. I mean, I, I kind of left halfway because of my ride. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I had to get home pretty quick, pretty early because I had school the next day. But it was so cool. Um, let's talk about movies with great shootouts, great action. What's yeah. your favorite action movie? My favorite action movie... Or movie with see. action in it. Hmm. I would probably have to say... Lately, I've been really into Aliens. I've been watching Aliens a whole lot. That's a great movie. Yeah. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aliens has some great stuff in it. James Cameron used to be amazing at action movies, and now he's just kind of mediocre comparatively to his old self. Yeah, he's got four more Avatar sequels coming out. Which, they're not bad, but, you know, they're just not as good as he used to be. Mm-hmm. Which is a damn shame. Uh, I, I would have to say my favorite Michael Mann movie is Collateral, which you have seen. Yeah, that's like, I went, it's hard to say it's my favorite because it's the only one I've seen, but I love that movie a lot. It's a great film, great mm-hmm. film. Uh, it's kind of like the sister, it's kind of like the, the twin com- counterpart to Heat. Both are LA mo- very LA movies. Both are filmed in LA, both are very LA based. Like, Michael Mann, despite having, I think he grew up in New York. Because he actually, yeah, he, he said he it was his first movie in L.A., I think. Other than, like, L.A. Takedown, which was a little earlier. But, like, he was still adjusting to L.A. And it was originally maybe supposed to be, take place in Chicago. Because that's where the original Vincent character that Vincent, or the original dude Vincent Hanna was based on lived, was uh, Chicago. That's where mm-hmm. he originally in real life took place. Um, but, yeah, that shootout is so... So amazing. I mean, there's some great other shootouts in it too, like the the theater shootout or no, the drive-in theater shootout. That's a great shootout. Uh, really, all the shootouts are spectacular. Um, but what's your f- favorite shootout specifically? Would you say the club scene in Collateral, like you said? I think on the first episode. Yeah, I think. Have you seen Miami Vice? I, I I've Miami seen Vice? bits and pieces. Miami Vice has a great final shootout too. And actually, at the beginning of Miami Vice, there's a scene where um, where there's this undercover agent getting shot by uh, 50 cal rounds. And what Michael Mann did was he actually shot up a car with 50 cal rounds and then digitally added in the actors afterwards. Which was pretty incredible to actually realistically simulate the damage that 50 cal rounds do. Which is like blow limbs off and stuff. Mm. It's pretty intense. You know what's a shootout that I saw recently um, that I really enjoyed was that first action sequence in Heat, um, not Heat, but um, Hard Boiled. Hard Boiled has a great shootout. Even yeah. they're ridiculous. They're great. That's what's fun about them. Yeah, they're, they're ridiculous. Yeah, they're great. Two-fisted, just pow, 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 pow. I'm doing gun, gun. Yeah, I love, like yeah, I love when he child. goes down the stairs on the, the That's rail. That's such yeah. a good scene. Have you ever played the game Stranglehold? No, I haven't. It's decent. John Woo is, and Chow Yun Fat are both involved. It's a continuation of Tequila's story. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Tequila has a daughter. Oh, you know what's you know what's awesome? What? Um, there's this video store in South Pasadena called Videotech. Yeah. Well, and they s- shout out to Videotech. Yeah. So they have they sell movie posters, and they just got in the most like kick ass um, hard boiled poster. Nice. It has Tequila holding a shotgun and holding the baby that he rescues at the end of the movie. Nice. It's a really cool poster. Did you ever? Do we ever? Do they still have that Ghost in the Shell poster? They do. Yeah. We should get it. Yeah, I want I want both those posters. Yeah, we should. I, I'm getting some money soon. I'll pay you back, dude. Nice. Yeah, they're fifteen bucks each. Yeah, get them. I'll pay you back. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we're just doing a <laughs> poster deal on our podcast. <laughs> yeah. We I I don't ha- I have a lot of posters. I've never put them up. 
But I, I love posters. I have a whole wall devoted yeah. to posters in my room. Yeah. I would like all my walls to be posters. I wish I had more ability to put up posters. I don't know why I don't. I need some thumbtacks or some tape. Yeah, I know. I just am too lazy to do it. Posters are great, though. Yeah, they are. Um, I think a bedroom without posters is just like... It's just a room. Depressing. Yeah, it's just a room. It's not a bedroom. Um, now, other other shootouts in movies that are great is, of course, other than, other than Michael Mann movies, which all have amazing shootouts. Except Manhunter's shootout is kind of a little dumb. Mm. That was before, I think... I don't, not even that bad. It's just like... A little too stylized for me. I mean, I love Michael Mann, and I love Manhunter, but that shootout was just a little weird. Some of it, like, it didn't feel like a Michael Mann shootout. Was that one, one of his earlier films? It was films? like one of his first movies. Yeah. And every other aspect about it was great. I somewhat prefer Manhunter to Silence the, to Red Dragon. And Silence of the Lambs, of course, too. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> uh, maybe I'll cut that out. Probably <laughs> don't. Yeah. Um, they deserve to listen to us warts but and all. Other other great shootouts like Ghost in the Shell. The anime had some great shoot. Uh, a couple of great shootouts. The end sh- end shootout is great. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite animated shootouts of all time. I can't actually think of another Ghost in the Shell too, right? Uh, Ghost in the Shell two has another great shootout, but I'm talking about the one against the spider. About, yeah, that one's about, cool. Against the, as it's called the think tank, I think. Mm-hmm. Or actually, no, it's it's called a spider tank, apparently, in the original Ghost in the Shell. The little, like, lore. Mm-hmm. Which is a dumb name, because it's just a tank. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about those them chaps in their moon <laughs> language. Um, let's see. Great shootouts. Well, what... What about... Even a bad action movie can have some great shootouts. Like, April Rain, the movie I worked on, which wasn't great. I don't want to shit on it. But it, it was not very well received. No, I didn't receive it very well. It was fun to work on, though. It was a very fun experience. Yeah, it looked, it looked more fun to work on than to watch. Yeah. It's just the shootout in that was a little too short. That's what I thought about that shootout. I mean, maybe I should cut this out because I don't want to step on any toes. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah, I'll let you know, I'll never see this. Um, you know what? But yeah, I loved working on April Rain. I'd love to work on any future projects. It's just I wish April Rain had a longer shootout. Hmm. You know, um... I don't think it's as bad... I don't think it's the birdemic of action movies, as some reviewers have called it. It's not that bad. It's just... Well, it's, not that, it's not that entertaining. Yeah. Okay. You, <laughs> you shit on it, I'm not going to endorse yeah, it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can shit on it. Yeah, you can shit on it, I'm not going to endorse any of it. Um, the April Rain shootout was fun to do. I recently contacted an armorer about... Uh, shout out to armorer Mike Tristano. You'll probably never hear this. He worked on April Rain with us, although he sent his, his representatives to work on it. I don't think he ever showed up on set once. But uh, that's expensive stuff. To use blanks is expensive. I mean, I hear CG is actually a little more expensive because it's CG and you have to shoot specifically for CG. Um, but blanks are goddamn... Like $1,000 with this guy. And he's he's one of the lower... Not lower end in quality, but like... In terms of cost, he's one of the low. He's like the lower end. Mm-hmm. I mean, as I as I'm, I'm not gonna shit on Mike Tristano because he's worked on some cool stuff like Three Ten to Yuma, which was um, a good movie. Yeah, great film. Um, and he he's the armorer, so he doesn't decide. You know, his it's just he he has a beautiful armory. I've seen his stuff, and his his inventory is beautiful. Like, so, but he's he's on the lower end of cost, and that's what he he advertises himself as is that he's very affordable mm-hmm. and he's great to work with shout out to Mike Tristano I'm <laughs> piece on like an idiot um, but a thousand dollars doesn't even cover one day really or barely covers one day maybe um, this business is humblingly expensive is something I've been learning recently um, I've been looking through because I want to shoot a scene sometime in Jan- in not January in June or do you July. want to talk about that scene and what it's part of it's part of a film a script i have a feature called making the day which is a feature i want to do and hopefully it gets done someday um yeah it's an action romance mostly romance and has some action scenes in it it's gonna be i think it's a pretty good script 88 pages and it's hopefully it's gonna get made um it's just gonna be expensive because movie making is very expensive that's that's the shame about it, but it's also a 
a good thing, I think, that it has a very high barrier of entry, is that you, if you're willing to spend that much money, you, you have to believe in your, in your product. Mm -hmm. Like, people have to believe in it, so they work hard on it, usually. That's why I think a lot of lower, but like the micro budget stuff is either really good or really bad. There's no mediocre, I think, with micro budget stuff. Yeah, I can't think of anything either has been absolutely terrible or it's been really good. Yeah, because if it's micro budget, they either don't give a shit or they, and it's awful, or they give so much of a shit that they're doing it all for free and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they believe in it a lot. So I, I don't think I've ever seen a mediocre micro-budget thing, which is a good thing for me. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Great shootouts. You know Sorry. what? Actually, um, I wanted to say that very, a lot of the time, um, like action comedies, they don't balance like the action and the comedy. Usually it's just like comedy with some stupid okay action. action but yeah. Hot Fuzz, Hot Fuzz is, is like the perfect blend of like comedy and action. Yeah. Like It's all hilarious. And then that final like 40 minutes or whatever the action scene so is, much good is so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say how Terminator has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is amusing to me. I mean, I don't think it shouldn't, because it's a great movie. It's just it's surprising to me that that has 100%. Like, I can see people... Ha I don't know, actually. No, I really can't. There's nothing you can really shit on with Terminator. It's no, it's a very movie. lean, like, straight-to-the-point thriller. Yeah. It's better than the second one, I think. Which, yeah. the second one's still great, but Terminator 1 is the ultimate Terminator movie. Yeah. Um, the new Alien is coming out. Pretty yeah, cool. Alien Covenant looks pretty good. Looks I actually got awesome. a slight spoiler on the IMDb casting list. Ah, they gave a spoiler on the cast. Well, don't tell anyone. On I'm not going to tell yeah, anyone. Don't yeah. tell our listeners. No. You know, I don't want to spoil anything except that the puppet master's an AI. <laughs> yeah. I, sorry, that if you haven't seen Ghost in the Shell and that did legitimately spoil something for you, that's a little in joke we have, where our dumb friend Nick, I spoiled that for him his first time watching Ghost in the Shell, and I. It was completely... I forgot for a second he hadn't seen the movie. And he got so mad. It was very funny. Um, was that the same day he ate our pizza? That was not the same day he ate our pizza. Where he said he was going vegan and then he ate our meat lover's pizza. And still said he was a vegan after that. It's like, you can't even eat pizza if you're a vegan because of the cheese. Or did he say vegan or vegetarian? I don't know. Whatever kind of stupid Whatever. thing. He was, he was just... He, in neither one anyway. He ate our meat lovers. What the fuck? <laughs> um, but yeah, Terminator's a great film. Let's talk more about Heat, because even though you haven't seen it, because it's one of the greatest action thrillers of all time. Really, it's more of a thriller than an action flick. Yeah, tell me everything you love about Heat. so much good action in it. Like, Michael Mann is, is obsessive about detail in his movies, which is great. Because I'm obsessive about detail, and I like to see him get all these details right, like the, like just I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but like although he did say one thing in the in the Q and A that was wrong about his movie, where it had, he said there was no CG in it, where which there is a shot where there's CG. It's a, it's just one muzzle flash, and it was for safety, but there that was a CG muzzle flash when he when um Kevin Gage I think it was when. Oh, I forgot the character's fucking name. When the the bad guy, the bad one, well, they're all bad guys, but you know, the quote unquote bad guy shoots the guard security guard in the face. It's such at such close range they couldn't use a blank, so they CG'd in a muzzle muzzle flash. Which I mean, you know, it's just he he must have forgotten about that. Even though he just I don't know, it was a long time. It was twenty two years ago, so yeah. he might have forgotten that that was CG. Um. It's not like, you know, he obsesses about it as much as n us nerds on IMFDB obsess about it. But you can tell it's, it's because the slide doesn't move, the hammer stays in place, it's C it's a uh, CG muzzle flash. Uh, Zack Snyder does some good action scenes. Let's go to Zack Snyder. He's great yeah. in action scenes. Yeah, I think um, Dawn of the Dead had some pretty cool Dawn sequences. Dawn of the Dead was incredible. Yeah. I love George Romero's stuff. I mean, sort of. I, I don't know how much how loyal I still am to George Romero's stuff. Like, Day of the Dead is one of my favorite zombies. Day of the Dead is my favorite of his movies. But, I like it better than Dawn. Yeah, Dawn of the Dead sucked compared to the, the Zack Snyder one. Well, I wouldn't say sucked. Okay, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic, but, you know, the Zack Snyder one was really fucking good. In terms of, like, remakes, it's one of the best. The best re Zack Snyder does the best remakes and adaptations. The best. Like, there's no one... 
And George Romero specifically has a lot of good remakes. Yeah, like The Crazies was really the good. The Crazies was a, good, was a great remake. Night of the Living Dead has a great remake. I Dawn actually haven't Dead. seen the Tom Savini one yet. The Tom Savini one's fucking good. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, the only bad remake I've seen of George Romero is uh, fucking Day of the Dead, which was barely a remake. Yeah, wasn't that just like in title only? Basically, although it had some elements like Bub. Hmm. I don't remember that movie at all. It was pretty terrible. It was, which sucked because the guy was played by an actor I really liked, Stark Sands, who was in Generation Kill. Generation Kill has some amazingly realistic action sequences. Like, the the shootout in episode 5 was so fucking good. All all the, just, all the tracers and everything, just, it was, looked so real. That it apparently brought Rudy Reyes back to, like, flashbacks to, in, to him. That's pretty intense. Yeah, it's, it's an intense, it's an intense series. Um, I mean, and it's, the funny part is that it's really funny, too. That's what makes it even more intense, is that it's hysterical. All the gallows humor and stuff, it's hysterical. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh shit, we just shot a little girl in the face. You know what is um, one of my personal favorite shootouts? What? The ending of Rambo or Rambo 4, as some people call it. Yeah, Rambo 4 is great. Yeah. That whole movie is great. Yeah, that's just like one of the most brutal shootouts. It's so brutal. Yeah. But it, it treats violence as, as it really is. It's like that's how, what the damage a 50 cal will do to a person. It will fuck them up real bad. It'll just turn them to the goo, basically. Yeah, it just goops them and jibs them. With the velocity of... Like, the muzzle slash will do damage to you if you're close enough. Because hmm. it burns people. It burns. Like, that's how... Like, it's... Guns do a lot of damage to people. And especially 50 caliber. That'll go through seven inches of steel over a mile away. Wow. It's a fucking de- deadly as fuck bullet. And there are, like, so, like, several dudes, like, directly in front of it who just get, yeah, like, just, mowed just, down. Just, just turned into liquid. Yeah. It mulches them. It's... Fucking amazing. I mean, not to say that violence is good, but, you know, it's fucking satisfying onto the screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Rambo 4 is a great movie. I don't really like the other Rambos that much, except the first one. Yeah, First Blood is good. First Blood is great. I actually haven't seen the middle movies. They're not that great. I mean, Rambo 3 is, eh, it's okay. Rambo 2 I didn't really like. Mainly because of the cinematography, it just doesn't look good. Mm. Rambo 3 is decent, but Rambo 1 and Rambo 4, great great movies they were supposed to remember they were planning they were to do last do, blood they were gonna do last blood and that would have been so fucking good yeah imagine david ayer doing that too that would have been, interesting, that been yeah. so good because it would have been like basically the end of sabotage a lot of that that would have been so good mm-hmm. david ayer let's talk about him again he's i just was watching end of watch recently that's a great film one of his greatest like i love david ayer films I will be, I'm unashamed to say I am a big fan of David Ayer. People, as people don't like Suicide Squad, I like Suicide Squad. It is one of a, it is a little bit of a weaker movie of his, comparatively, because all of his other movies are so fucking strong. But David Ayer is one of the strongest action directors since Michael Mann, maybe even in some aspects stronger. Hmm. Like, Michael Mann takes some getting into. Like... I don't want to say anything to disparage Michael Mann because he's one of my... He's probably just about my top favorite director. But if you're not a Michael Mann person, I can see you not being interested in... Like, his movies can maybe seem to be dragging on. Michael Mann movies are more art than movie sometimes, more film than movie. Mm -hmm. Whereas David Ayer is much more accessible. He's much more, like, crowd-pleaser. Which can be, you know... A blessing and a curse, because sometimes you could see his movies maybe being called shallow or something to please the crowds, but they're not really. They're almost, they're really good movies. Both Michael Mann and David Ayer are, are top-notch directors. Um, Michael Mann, I think, is more coming from the obsessively obsessive detail, kind of from research and just knowledge, whereas Ayer, I think, brings more experience, more personal experience to the movies. Because he used to be like... Um, part of the Navy, which I think he might have done some top secret shit, high speed shit. At least that's what Terrence Howard says, but who knows? He's got a little dick. <laughs> Did you know that? Terrence Howard has a micro penis. Yeah, he told me about that story. That's pretty fucking funny. I mean, he's a great actor though. Yeah, but he has a small dick. But the fact that his his wife was blackmailing him with the micro penis and then he did a nude scene. I mean, it could be a great diffuser for that. It's like, yeah, bitch, I have a micro penis. Tell everyone now. No, everyone knows now. It's the movie uh, Hustle and Flow, I believe. 
No, not how no, it was a 50, the 50 Cent movie. It was uh, Get, Get Rich or Die, die Trying. Try yeah. He shows that he has a micropenis. Um, which, you know, no, nothing against micropenis. Terrence hey, Howard, it's not the size, it's how you use it. Yeah, that's tr- not true at all. <laughs> but, um, I mean, what would I know? But Terrence Howard is a fine actor. Let's not disparage him for his tiny little dick. Um, shout out to Terrence Howard. Shout yeah, I mean, we like you despite your small dick, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, I'm not interested in his dick. I just like that story that his wife was blackmailing him with it. And then he did a nude scene, which is like, hey, take some balls. Why is it showing peak? That's weird. Um, okay. Sorry. A little bit of audio thing right there. Um, Terrence Howard, by the way, was in Sabotage, which was great. Yeah. Yeah, so t- he's he. That's where I learned that David Ayer might have done some high speed shit. High speed, for those of you who don't know, is like top secret government shit, black ops, kind of, that kind of thing, special forces, Devgru, which is what SEAL Team Six is called now. He does hire. Po- I think Kevin Vance w- might have been Devgru. Kevin Vance is, is David Ayer's, uh, basically his favorite military advisor. He's been in a couple of his movies, like End of Watch. Uh, Fury and Suicide Squad. He and Sabotage. He was in Sabotage as Tripod McNeely. So he's been in four David Ayer movies. Um, he's definitely been a SEAL, but I think he went a little above and went Devgru. Uh, and Devgru is the guys who who took out Osama bin Laden. Uh, people say SEALs. It's, it's like technically they're right, but it's a little above SEALs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really like David Ayer. My favorite script of his is Training Day. Training yeah. Day is an amazing script. But directing-wise, End of Watch is my favorite of yeah. his. Actually, I think I like David Ayer. I think I like End of Watch more than Training Day as a script. Really? Yeah, just because it all seems so improvised. Mm. Like, nothing against Training Day. It's a fucking amazing script. But End of Watch, just the acting elevates the script a little more. Yeah, the chemistry between um, Joan Hall and um, Pena. Pena, it's, yeah. It's great. That's one, It's one of my favorite movies. Um, yeah, it's such a great, uh, what else is there to talk about? Fuck, we should have done more prep. Bad movies, even bad action movies have some good action sequences. Like, what can we think of? Um, I mean, they're not good action sequences, but they're hilarious. A Samurai Cop has some really hilarious action. And even that used real blanks. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. It's most of the time. There are some shots where I think they use cat guns. Which is like, holy shit. But they also get squibs sometimes. They do. Actually, do they ever see use real squibs? Well, they're, well they're I don't know. Blood if they're, packs. Yeah, blood packs maybe. But, not, but you see a guy... I mean, there's never the explosive ones. I don't see explosive ones in that no. movie that I can remember. Yeah, I know what you're thinking though. When uh, they're in the parking lot and the black guy's getting shot, you just see like the patches appear on his chest. No, no, that's not the parking lot. That's in the, the woods. That's what I'm thinking. The guy with the shotgun. Okay, well, I was thinking about the part where... um. They're Where like they at the restaurant. Their chest, yeah, yeah. And then there's blood. Yeah, yeah. They put it on their hand. Um, house. You know what? Um, house of the Dead. House of the Dead. Yeah, that has some, some fun really action fun action. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun. Like movie. the scene that the actors almost got killed in. Yeah, and who have always in the commentary is like, yeah, I was using the camera. It's, like, it's very dangerous, but it gets such good images. Something like that, and then he takes a fucking phone call in his commentary. Yep. That was so. If any one of you, if any of you, I'm gonna promote Robbie's thing, the uh, his Rob's video dump, where he has commentaries of his old movies, which are. Can I break the character and say they're done satirically? Yeah, yeah, you can. His commentaries are done satirically, where he takes a phone call in one of them, mm-hmm. which was so perfect. That was so fucking funny. Yeah, that was pretty fun to do. I mean, it, it wasn't scripted either. It was either. not scripted. Like, I just happened to get a call and I answered it. It felt like it could have been because I know Robbie, he, he loves that shit. He loves doing that kind of satire shit. Yeah. But they're very funny because he treats the movies as if they're gold and they're just not. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Um, so yeah, check out Rob's video dump on YouTube. Yeah, that, that'll be my plug. Yeah, that's that'll your be, plug. That'll be put, um, my plug for this episode. And we're at 24 minutes. Maybe we should wind down. We were going to try for 45, but we're having trouble thinking this. I think um, our, we should leave the lo- longer run times for our guest episodes. Yeah. Our, our dumb friend, Nick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be pl- I'm at Right on Target on t- most social medias and Right on Target Photography on dot com on the web. That's my photography website. Um, you can check Robbie at his 
broad video, broad video dub on YouTube. We'll include a link probably. And also my letterbox account, uh, and, Tanny RT. Tanny RT. All right. Thanks for listening. And this has been Mostly Movies with uh, Robin Quinn. Goodbye. Bye.